Hello Helldivers, we literally got the biggest patch in the game's history up to this point, it's actually insane. A lot of weapon balance changes, armor changes, a level cap increase and even huge secret changes that nobody expected. Make sure you watch the whole video or at least scrub through the chapters for everything since I promise you do not want to miss this. And of course if you enjoy Helldivers make sure you hit the like and subscribe to my channel for even more Helldivers 2 news, leaks and updates. And without further ado let's get right in to it. Patch 1000200. This update includes balance changes to missions, stratagems, weapons, enemies and hell divers and of course general fixes and stability improvements. Let's start with something small. New planetary hazards have been added and those are the blizzards and sandstorms. And for something bigger the maximum level cap is now raised to 150 and yes the level cap increase does come with new titles which we shall cover later in the video. And the best part about this is that if you were already at level 50 and played the game the experience will be given to you retroactively so make sure you log in and check your level. Let's get on to the balancing. For missions retrieve essential personnel they move the enemy spawn points further away from the objective to give players a fairer chance of defending the location. Also there are fewer civilians required to complete the mission on higher difficulties. Destroy command bunkers now has more objective locations, the mission was way too easy before compared to other missions, it can now appear in operations from difficulty 5. And also have the negative effect of operation modifiers that increase stratagem cooldowns or call in times. The changes to the essential personnel mission are actually very much welcome since I'm not gonna lie to you I hated those missions because extracting those useless civilians was a giant pain in the rear. As for destroying command bunkers that's a height. we'll see how they play but meh. The best change from here is the halving of the negative effects of stratagem related modifiers. The devs listened to us and finally realized these are absolutely unfun to play with. Removing them would have been best if you ask me but I guess we're not going to get that far so this half step is still acceptable. Primary, secondary and support weapon changes. Arc thrower fixed charging inconsistencies. It will always take 1 second to charge a shot. Reduced distance from 50 meters to 35 meters and increased stagger force. These changes make a whole lot of sense. The arc thrower is very strong and to be absolutely fair I believe these are fine. There's even a buff in there so I don't think this will really affect it that much and if you did shoot it from that far away you probably know it was never a reliable way of using it anyway. Guard dog now restores full ammo from supply boxes, anti-material rifle damage increased by 30%, breaker incendiary damage per bullet increased from 15 per bullet to 20 per bullet, fire damage per tick increased by 50% from all sources. Guard dog was never good and it will probably not make it much better. The anti-material rifle change is actually huge and if you are good with precision weapons you are going to love using it. I will definitely give it another shot now. As for the breaker incendiary these are huge. The damage increase is not 5 per shot but 5 per bullet. So you are going to get so much mileage out of it. Especially on terminate missions it will actually be nuts. The increase of fire damage per tick is only a cherry on top of the sundae. Liberator Penetrator now has a full auto mode. The Dominator gets a damage increase from 200 to 300 and increased stagger. Diligence Counter Sniper increased armor penetration from light to medium. All of these changes are absolute fire. The Liberator Penetrator has long been a gun I loved using against the clankers. It's a small buff but a buff is a buff is a buff. The Dominator is actually even better than it for a lot of use cases and now it does more damage? That's crazy. It's now basically the best shotgun in the game. As for the diligence counter sniper, the increased armor penetration will be useful and it might finally get some playtime. Slugger, reduced stagger, reduced damage from 280 to 250, reduced demolition force, fixed armor penetration tag in the menu. The slugger, liberator concussive and senator, fixed incorrect armor penetration tags in the menu. And here we go, another nerf that you kind of have to agree with. The slugger has been the go to primary for most of the player base since the game came out so now it finally gets tuned down. Should you be mad? Considering the changes to the dominator I would say who cares we got better boom booms. Recallless rifle, increase the number of rockets you restore from supply boxes from 2 to 3. Spear, increase the number of missiles you restore from supply boxes from 1 to 2. HMG, the highest rate of fire reduced from 1200 RPM to a moderate 950. The Quasar Cannon easily became meta and now we are getting what we should have gotten with the first patch. 
buffs to other heavy weapons, the recallless and spear buffs while mild are needed. Let's see what happens, but we should feel good about these changes. The HMG change makes a little bit of sense, considering at max RPM it's so hard to control, but I don't think it was needed since it's pretty much so bottom tier it's actually trash. Buff it and talk to me again. Stratagems, Patriot Exosuit, rockets will now penetrate armor only on direct hit. This pretty much means that glancing hits won't do you much good. It's a nerf and as the Exosuit is kind of low on health, I do think this was not really necessary, but the Exosuit is not that good anyway when compared with other options, so hopefully this won't hurt that many people. Enemies, balancing adjustments have been made too. Charger's normal melee attack now does less damage against Exosuits. Bio Spewer and Nursing Spewer do less damage with their puke. The Bio Titan can no longer be stunned. Shriekers no longer create bug breaches. Shriekers hitting you while they're dead now do significantly less damage. The change to Chargers is not that crazy, but it's still nice. As for the changes to Spewers, thank you. Fighting them can be a total nightmare sometimes, especially when you get overrun, so this gives us a better fighting chance. The Bio Titan not being stunnable with a stun grenade is actually kind of an acceptable change, it never made sense to me anyway. Shriekers no longer creating bug breaches is a full on godsend and it's spectacular for the health of the game. The other change to Shriekers will also make it significantly less annoying to encounter them, so thumbs up to that. Helldiver, heavy and medium armor protects better and you now take 10% less damage than before while wearing heavy armor and about 5% less when wearing medium armor. Fortified Commando and Light Armor is unchanged. In my previous video we did cover possible armor changes and these are not what we talked about. The changes here are just a prelude to what we are about to get and there's a nice comparison video you should be seeing in the back right now. It's nothing crazy but it's a welcome change and I can't wait to see armor be improved further. Now let's try to rapid fire the fixes as there's a lot of them. Fixed issue where safe settings for PS5 would be reset when the game is rebooted, causing things such as loadout and hint settings to be reset. Enemies now properly target exosuits. Previously many enemies effectively ignored exosuits if a helldiver on foot was available for them as a target. Fixed exosuits being able to fire their weapons while opening the minimap. The helldiver and exosuit both had a bug that made them sometimes take explosion damage multiple times, making things like automaton rockets be too deadly. This is now fixed. Automaton enemy constellations that preferred to spawn more of certain devastator types did not work and now function as they should. This means that sometimes when playing against the automatons you will face more devastators instead of the other enemy types. We have improved the system that prevents hellpots steering close to large or important objects. We have solved issues where the effective area around objects was a lot larger than intended. We have reduced the number of objects that prevent hellpots steering. Fixed cases where the ground under some assets could be bombed causing them to float. Ballistic shield changes, collision mesh has been slightly increased in size for more forgiveness. Changed shield poses so that less of the helldiver is exposed. Addressed bug where parts of the helldiver would become vulnerable while using the shield in first person. The ballistic shield changes should also be playing right about now. Honestly, I might need to try this one out just to see how it does as now it might be half decent as a pick. Not good, but at least passable, which is much better than complete and utter disappointment. And now for the things I am most excited about, starting with the smallest thing. Now when you log in game, there's new short little intros that play showing you the bridge. It's really cool and it makes you feel like you're in a space marine movie. Also, when you extract successfully out of a mission, your helldiver will be covered in blood and nastiness. Just a small detail, but an awesome change. And hey yo, do you remember how you commented on my last video that the major order doesn't matter and it's only for meadows? Well, karma is here. Let me show you these awesome clips of the new enemies on the bot front. The nice part is that the gunships can be taken down by two shots from an auto cannon, which makes it even more viable. As long as you don't let them swarm you, you should be Gucci. These ratchety clankers are slow in the air, so they won't chase you effectively, but if they reach you, their laser barrage will absolutely delete you from the planet. So make sure you find the fabricators for them and take them out with extreme prejudice. We also did get the walkers from one of my previous videos further proving that all of the leaks I feature on this channel are true and further solidifying the credibility of the sources. Honestly, this thing looks and feels like a whole ass boss. 
It takes an orbital laser and multiple quasar shots to the face. It's tough, mean, nasty, and oh so beautiful to see in action. Will it be a nightmare on Helldive? Probably. Will it feel absolutely awesome when you take it down? abso freaking lootly There's also a quote-unquote easy way of taking it down, which I doubt a lot of people would get often, but maybe it will give you more of a reason to use the jetpack. Finally. And before we wrap up, I just wanted to tell you that in my next video I'm going to feature some absolutely freaking insane leaks. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like. Thanks for tuning in Helldiver and I'll see you in the next one.